Welcome to DP2 Insights. Uh, this is the first in a series of three quick videos on setting up and using CD writing, specifically the Romage. From categories, go to CD writing. The first step in the process is to set up the writer itself on DP2. And really what this is, is an opportunity to build that connection through the network uh, to the Romage. So we name the writer, this particular setup is a definition based on the variables uh, uh, for this particular writer so that if you had multiple uh, CD burners or multiple uh, instances of how you wanted to set this up, you would be able to do that from here. So as an example, I have Ramage 1 and 2. If you are using a network domain and need to select a network computer, you would be able to select those here. The burning computer is the name of the computer name on the network. You can connect to it or write the path to it uh, depending on uh, what your approach is. You need to select the version of the Ramage software that is on the Ramage burner that you're using. You can select to set this up to auto run at startup so that if you're queuing up uh, images that need to be burned to CD or DVD as an example. When you boot up this version of DP2 or this workstation, DP2, it'll go ahead and auto start the media right up. We have set the max simultaneous build session set to two. What that means is that DP2 and the burner can work together so that it can be burning one CD and processing the next one. In addition to that, on the directories tab, you'll need to specify the location on the network that um, where you're going to be saving those files that uh, will be used by the Ramage to burn the CDs. And this, of course, is a network location, as you can see here, on the Ramage computer itself. That's really all there is to that first layer of setup. On the user taskbar, you'll see the Ramage writer. We're just building this table, is essentially what's happening. The next step in the setup process is to go ahead and create templates in DP2 so that you can begin to build a relationship between the data that you'll merge from DP2 to the data that will be used to um, either print a label or to, uh, in this case, we do have a label and that'll be included on another video. There are some steps that will require you to work both within some of the software that supports the CD burner as well as within DP2 to create um, the data in this particular table. Once you've done that and you have successfully connected to your Ramage, when you're working, what happens is you're going to be using export images. When you export an image for the Ramage, and we'll look at that for just in a moment, essentially what you do is you create these Ramage orders. They don't appear as Ramage orders really anywhere but within this particular table so that DP2 understands what it's going to be doing based on a particular template and how those orders are going to get run. The image mastering, I'll just mention it while we're here. This is if you were using the CD writing interface to write to another type of CD or DVD burner on perhaps a system or somewhere else uh, in your lab. Uh, so in order to send a Ramage order off to the CD or DVD burner, you, what you'll need to do is export images. So I'm going to go ahead and go to order entry. I happen to have a Ramage order that I set up so that I can show you this. So I'm going to go ahead and from here I'm going to go straight to exporting those images. And in this case, in this particular order, I have four images. I've specified the order in the role. I have a setup called the Ramage setup and I'm going to select. Once you create this setup, you'll want to select to use that setup. And I'll show you the variables that we put into that setup so that you know the other pieces that you're going to need to think about. The first is the format. And again, this is a, totally up to you, but you'll need to specify and make sure that you understand what you want in terms of your exported output. In this case, it'll be JPEG. In addition to that, you'll need to make 
as with any other export, you'll need to make decisions about size, adjustment, sharpening, and so on, color management, logos. Um, the critical pieces for the remage are that your directory, you'll notice here, needs to be where the remage on the network can get at the resulting exported image files in order to burn them to the CD. And you'll need to specify a unique name for each one of these image files as they get burned onto the CD. The options here, we've chosen order frame. You'll need to create a queue. So in the case of setting up this process, this requires a render engine as it does with any other export. We've called this Remage 1. In addition to that, on the Remage tab, what you'll be selecting is the specific writer. You'll need to enable it. The template that you're going to be using, in this case we have the CD School, and we'll talk about that in the video uh, where we talk about labels, and the Output Media Path. In the Output Media Path, in addition to the file name, you'll need to leave that single backslash that stay, starts there, as well as uh, specifying the extension. Uh, you can select to delete it after. That's, of course, up to you. And this is a case, again, where once you've chosen the appropriate naming convention or the desired naming convention to select use and make sure that you enable it. When you create a render engine for the uh, Remage, uh, you'll go through the process for a disk printer and select it as the Remage, just like you would for any other um, printer. Thank you.